Hey YouTube, Ethan here. Today I wanted to discuss piping and oxygen not included, but more specifically, directional flow of substances inside of pipes and conveyor rails. This video idea was submitted by a fan in the comments section. I try to read all the comments that my videos get, but I don't always have time to reply, because as the channel has been growing, I get so many comments. Rest assured that if you do have a suggestion for me, feedback on one of my builds, or questions, I will get to it eventually. So if you have a request for a tutorial idea that I should do, or another subject that you'd like to see a video on, please feel free to leave it down below, because I love taking your feedback and turning them into ideas for the channel. You may be surprised to find out that there are a lot of little nuances and techniques that you can apply to piping and conveyor rails and oxygen not included to make your colony more efficient. Likewise, there are equal number of ways that you can break piping and conveyor rails so that your system stops working altogether, and the game is not the greatest at telling you explicitly what you're doing wrong when this happens. So in this video, I'm going to try to address that and I hope that you find it informative and find helpful ways to build your piping throughout your colony and tailor the piping mechanisms to your colony so you can have a successful playthrough. From this point forward, I'm going to refer to conveyor rails, ventilation piping, and liquid piping as just piping. Lucky for us, the game developers have made it so that all piping pretty much works the same way. So if you can master the liquid pipe, you can master them all. So with that, let's get into the video and let's learn all about piping. The first thing that we have to understand about piping is probably the most obvious, and that is that liquids, gases, and materials throughout piping can only flow in one direction. This is always indicated by the outlet of a building or a device, which is always green. Any substances flowing through here must flow towards an inlet, which is always in white. This is obviously the most basic concept when it comes to piping, so you probably already know this. So let's start getting progressively more complicated with our builds. When you have multiple pipes joining together, the inlet will always take priority when determining the direction of flow. You can see this happening with these two gas pumps. They're both pumping oxygen towards the inlet, which in this case is a high pressure vent. This means that you can have more than one outlet connected to the same network of inlet piping, and the substances will always travel in the same direction as long as there is only one inlet. If there is more than one inlet on the same network of pipes, then we can refer to this as a fork or a branch depending on the configuration. I like to call the transition point of these forks or branches the nodes. Basically, a node is where the substances have to make a decision point about where they're going to travel because there's more than one section of pipe connected to that specific location. The configuration on your screen right now is what I like to call a fork because it looks like a fork. This means that the substances divert at the exact same location on the piping networks towards the separate inlets. You can see that the oxygen is splitting at an equal rate at the node and it then travels to the high pressure gas vent that is connected at the very end of the pipe. A node in this configuration causes the substance to spread equally depending on where you're trying to send it, meaning that the substance will first try to go left, then right, and then straight, as you can see the oxygen doing on your screen right now. So each of these high pressure gas vents will receive approximately 33.3% of the oxygen that is pumped by this one specific gas pump. A branching network is different. A branching network has more than one node, and the main difference is that each node will cause a 50% split among the substances that you're trying to send through the piping Network. This means that the first node will send 50% of substances to the first inlet, which is another high pressure gas vent, and the remaining 50% will continue through the piping network. This essentially means 50% of all substances that is pumped by this gas pump will come out this very first high pressure gas vent. Then at the next node, the oxygen will split again. 50% will go to the second high pressure gas vent, and the remaining 50% will go to the last gas vent. Because the total amount of gas is already split by 50% at the very first node, it means that the last two gas vents will only have a 50% share of the remaining gas that is pumped through the entire network. You can use this knowledge to prioritize where your substances are flowing. Maybe you want to spread them out equally, like in the case of supplying oxygen to Atmos suit docks or within your colony. In that case, you would use something like the fork technique. Or your priority could be filling a water pipe that is headed towards an electrolyzer for creating oxygen and the remaining water headed towards water reservoirs that you're collecting for future use. It's worth noting that you can use the fork and the branch technique to your liking on the exact same network, and you can usually use them without too much planning or consequence. But it's worth knowing how the material or substances is traveling through your pipes, just in case you want to do something very specific. In this setup, I'm pumping oxygen from my electrolyzer setup, or my SPOM, and it's going through a fork with this node. Then it branches off into several different Atmosu docks, with the priority of filling the oxygen always being given to this very first dock to the far right. The dock to the very far left will always get the least amount of oxygen. Perhaps the most interesting part of this setup is the bridge. So let's go talk about how that works. First and foremost, the bridge is often used for jumping over existing piping networks that are of the same category as the ones that you're trying to create. For example, if there was an existing piping network running up and down this screen, you would use this bridge to jump over it so you don't inadvertently connect the bridge that you're trying to build onto the existing network, which would almost certainly cause a failure or a mixture of gases within your base. But the significance of bridges is much more than just that. As you can see on your screen right now, the oxygen that is being pumped through the left gas pump is not at all traveling to the high 
high pressure gas vent at the very top, even though it's enabled and ready to receive oxygen. This is because whenever a bridge is connected to a piping network, it will always prioritize taking the path through the bridge rather than passing over the bridge, even if there's an existing inlet that is ready to receive the oxygen. The inlet on the bridge will always take priority, regardless of what is downstream of it in the existing piping network. Once the gas gets filled up inside the pipe on the right side, only then will the oxygen from the left gas pump go beyond the bridge and utilize the high pressure gas vent on the left side. If we open the high pressure gas vent back up on the right side, oxygen will once again start flowing from the bridge over to the opposite side of the piping. A scenario where this might be useful is if you're supplying water from a water source, like a water geyser, to an electrolyzer or spawn setup. You may want to prioritize the water going directly into your spawn, but if you're pumping too much water, it can bypass the spawn and go into a water reservoir where you can then cool it down or use it for crops or other things. But having the bridge connected will ensure that the water is always prioritized in one direction. This is a lot different than a fork or a branch where the water, or in this case the oxygen, would get spread out evenly among the existing network. And because a situation like a spawn is so critical to the function of your base, you want to make sure that it has all the supply of water that it can possibly have so it never goes offline and keeps producing oxygen for your duplicants. We can see how this works in more detail when the piping network is expanded with more than two sources of oxygen. The two pumps on the right side both share a node where the oxygen is coming together and the pumps are not able to run efficiently because the pipe is continuously getting blocked. However, because the gas pump on the left side is connected to the gas bridge, the node downstream from these two gas pumps will take priority when accepting substances. That means that anything upstream from this node will have to wait its turn before it's able to pass through the piping network. This is another technique that you could use to prioritize the flow of different substances from different areas within your base. This is a slightly different setup than the one you just saw. The main difference being that the outlet of the gas bridge is connected directly into the piping network as opposed to sharing a node like in the previous build. We mentioned earlier how the inlet of a gas bridge always takes priority when connected to a piping network. The gas bridge will become blocked if the outlet is connected directly onto a piping network and it does not share a node like in the previous build. So in this scenario, the middle gas pump and the far right gas pump will be able to work at maximum efficiency and their pipes will not be blocked, neither will the gas pump on the far left. This is because the outlet of the gas bridge is blocked, which overrides the priority that would be given to the inlet of the gas bridge. Let's see what happens when we shut off the high pressure gas vent on the left side. You can see that the oxygen starts to accumulate and the gas bridge will not pass the gas over to the right side of the piping network because the outlet of the bridge is blocked. Another situation where gas bridges are often used is directing the flow of substances so that you don't have unwanted directional travel in your piping network. Sometimes you may have a very large piping network where you're carrying oxygen to multiple different locations or water to multiple different locations, and you want to make sure that you're not sending water to low priority locations. For example, in this scenario, you can see that the gas pump on the left is pumping 500 grams of oxygen and it's being split at this node between the piping network to the right and the high pressure gas vent up top. The other 50% is being combined at this node just above the right gas pump, which kind of creates a chaotic environment environment for your substances. We can very easily change the direction of flow just by adding in a gas bridge. We're going to delete a section of the pipe, add in the gas bridge, and see what happens. The gas bridge will change the direction of flow for the substances that are coming through these two piping networks. The oxygen from the right gas pump will now get split at this node equally in three separate directions because there are three separate inlets on this section of piping. The gas bridge will obviously not allow the gas to flow from the left gas pump towards the right side of this network. You can use gas bridges to your advantage in order to control the direction of flow within your colony, and it's extremely easy and useful to incorporate into your base. So if you ever have any problems where a substance is not flowing in the direction that you want it to, or the substances have stopped flowing altogether, add in a gas bridge and see what happens. It may just be the fix to your piping network if the piping has become blocked. On your screen right now is an electrolyzer setup that's going to produce hydrogen and oxygen from the water that is in this chamber. We're going to pretend that this is some sort of water geyser and that we want to prioritize the water flowing from here into the electrolyzer because obviously we want to provide oxygen for our duplicants to survive. So as we turn this system on, you can see that the piping that is headed towards the electrolyzer will always be full because of this gas bridge. Now the electrolyzer obviously cannot keep up with how much liquid one liquid pump is able to pump through the pipe. So when this section of pipe inevitably becomes blocked, the remaining water that is pumped by the liquid pump simply travels past the liquid bridge and into a reservoir where we could use it for other applications. This is a very easy way to use bridges in order to prioritize sending substances to one location over another. Aquatuners almost command you to use bridges in order to make them function correctly. In this scenario, we're going to attempt to cool this chamber of liquid down using this aqua tuner. If we simply had the liquid coming into the inlet of the aqua tuner and leaving from the outlet, let's see what would happen. While it's working exactly as it should, it's going to cool the water down without regard for the temperature of the water. The main problem with 
with this setup is that eventually the water will travel through the aqua tuner so often that it will cool down below its freezing point and eventually break the piping that it's in. So you're going to have to send your duplicates in here to fix it. So for this reason, we usually use a liquid pipe thermal sensor that is connected via automation to our aqua tuner. Now normally this would go directly to your aqua tuner, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I also have it connected to a signal switch. So how do we stop the water from continuously flowing through the aqua tuner and eventually becoming frozen, which will break our pipes? That's easy, we're going to have to create a diversion for the water to travel so that it's not continuously flowing through the aqua tuner and the thermal sensor that is connected to your liquid pipe will be able to shut the aqua tuner off once the liquid reaches the desired temperature. So let's connect our pipe and see what happens. Without a liquid bridge, we've just created a problem. The water passing through this node has two different directions of travel. This is because 50% of the water will travel left on this node and 50% will travel towards the top. So it will create a scenario where the water is constantly getting cooled in this very tiny loop and not efficiently cooling the chamber of water that you're trying to cool in the first place. The fix for this is actually very simple and you've probably seen it many times before in other tutorials that I have on my channel or from other content creators. All you have to do to fix this scenario is simply add a liquid bridge so that you maintain the flow of direction of the water that is passing through this aqua tuner. Also, when the water inside the piping eventually becomes cool enough, the aqua tuner will shut off and the water will be able to bypass it through this liquid bridge. A perfect example of this is this aluminum volcano tamer. The thermal sensor for this piping is set at 10 degrees Celsius. This means that when the polluted water is above 10 degrees Celsius, the water will travel through the aqua tuner, thus getting cooled by the aqua tuner so it can continue to cool the steam turbines and the materials that is passing on the conveyor rail, which in this case would be aluminum coming from the aluminum volcano. As soon as the water is below the threshold that we set, the thermal sensor will shut off the aqua tuner, which the water can then bypass and continue to travel along this loop. Now, what would be the benefit of this? Well, again, we're not cooling the water down to its freezing point, which is going to keep the system running indefinitely because we're not freezing the liquid inside of the piping. The second major benefit is that even if this water didn't have a freezing point at all, it would be wasting energy by keeping the aqua tuner running at all times when it's not needed. So this is a perfect example of why you would want to use a liquid bridge at some point in your playthrough in oxygen not included. Conserve power and to prevent your builds from breaking altogether. Let's move on to another technique that I like to call controlled diversions. A controlled diversion is a fancy way of saying that I'm using a gas shutoff in order to control where different substances might be flowing through a section of pipe. In this scenario, we have carbon dioxide, hydrogen gas, and sour gas. And we're going to want to filter the carbon dioxide up into this left chamber and any other substance flowing through this pipe to the right chamber. Now, a practical scenario for something like this would be if you're trying to feed a power generator like a natural gas generator and the source at which you're capturing the natural gas has different types of gases mixed in it. Of course, you could just use something like the gas filter, which is a dedicated output where you can choose the type of gas that is flowing through. This is not at all hard to set up and you're more than welcome to use this. But I've stressed this many times within my tutorials that the gas filter takes 120 watts of power where Whereas the gas shutoff only takes 10 watts of power. As your colony grows and expands, you're going to want to control the flow of substances on many different applications throughout your entire colony. This means gases, conveyor belts, and of course liquids. So if you have many gas filters, liquid filters, or solid filters, each one of them is going to take 120 watts of power, which can add up very quickly. On the other hand, you can have 12 gas shutoffs before you equal the usage of just one gas filter. They are slightly more complicated to set up, and that's what I'm here to show you right now. What we're effectively going to try to do is divert any gases that we don't want to the right chamber and only let the gases that we do want into the left chamber. We do this with a gas pipe element sensor. The gas pipe element sensor is set to send the green signal when it's detecting carbon dioxide. And you'll notice that this is right behind on the gas pipe of the gas shutoff. It cannot be anywhere else or this will not work correctly. When carbon dioxide is detected at this cell in the gas pipe, it will send the green signal and allow it to pass. When it's sending a red signal, any other gas, in this case being hydrogen and sour gas, will divert from this input point to this high pressure gas vent on the right. So let's go ahead and see this in action. When this gas shutoff receives a red signal, it will divert any element passing through it so it does not go through the gas shutoff. Now you can use diversions like this in many other different applications, but I like to use them most commonly in situations where I'm picking up a lot of different materials from one location, such as a Paku farm. I did a tutorial on Paku farms earlier, so if you haven't seen it, I'm going to link it in the card above. But essentially how this works, is the pakus are going to drop eggs, fillets, they're also going to drop eggshells and polluted dirt. Everything gets picked up by either this conveyor loader on the far right or this conveyor loader at the top. I'm using a bridge here in order to keep the flow of materials 
headed in one direction. Otherwise, everything loaded onto this conveyor loader would split at this node between going left and right at a 50% rate because there's an inlet on either side. In this scenario, we already have multiple diversions. This first conveyor shutoff is set to filter out eggs to repopulate this Paku chamber. And the second conveyor shutoff is set to filter out polluted dirt that is passing through the conveyor rail. The polluted dirt will then get dropped off in the puff chamber, which creates polluted oxygen for the puffs to breathe. The fillets, eggshells, and any remaining eggs that I don't want from this chamber head to my kitchen. Because I'm on a sandbox asteroid, I'm not too concerned about sorting for eggshells, but in a real colony, I would have another diversion set up with another conveyor shut off to filter out eggshells to head towards my rock crusher. That is it for piping networks and oxygen not included. I hope that you were able to learn something from this tutorial about how you can manage your piping networks better in oxygen not included. And I hope that you can use these techniques to improve the efficiency of the flow of substances within your base. Remember that elaborate and complicated looking piping networks are just very simple ones put together to form one very large piping network. Even something that you see on screen right now that looks very complicated is actually not when you start breaking it down into smaller segments. This is an overly complicated filtering that I'm doing with the hydrogen and oxygen inside of this electric electrolyzer setup. I was playing around with different ways to build an electrolyzer setup and started to add way too many gas filters and eventually ended up with something like this. The system works perfectly fine, but it is overly complex and unnecessary. Regardless if it's overdone, the main thing is that you're using it efficiently and effectively within your playthrough to help your duplicate survive and get to the end game and win the game. If you enjoyed this or if you were able to learn something, please leave a rating down below as this helps the channel immensely. And let me know down in the comments if I missed anything in this tutorial that could help new players out in the game. Also let me know if you have any suggestions for future tutorials that you would like to see on the channel. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, as there are many more videos on the way. And as always, I want to give a shout out to the fans that have been supporting the channel for many weeks and months since it's been going. I really appreciate all of your support, and of course, it gives me great motivation to continue to produce more videos for you guys that you can enjoy on the channel. So with that, I'm Ethan, and I'll see you guys in the next one.